So um, what I want to talk about today is the maintainer's paradox. And I'm going to start by referring back to a paper that was written by Eric Raymond called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. And uh, if you haven't read this, you really should. It, it contains some really interesting ideas, but one of the things that it introduces is a core principle, uh, I think, that undergirds um, open source and how it works. And it's actually a mathematical principle in, in a way, although it's expressed uh, kind of differently. He, he referred to it as Linus's law. Um, and uh, what, it is, what it is is this, that uh, he said in the paper that with enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Uh, another way to put that is that if you have uh, a large enough community, the more people you have in the community, the more likely you are that there's going to be someone in that community that can look at something and kind of decode it easily, debug it easily. And he put it in the context of, of software quality. Uh, when I do training at Sony, um, I actually uh, change, change this a little bit and, and use a light bulb metaphor. Um, and so how I explain it is if you have five or ten light bulbs uh, that are kind of similar to each other, uh, you turn them on, there's going to be, uh, you're going to have some good ideas in those light bulbs. You know, light bulb, ever since Edison, the light bulb has been used as a metaphor for a good idea. Um, but, uh, but if you have a thousand light bulbs of different shapes and sizes, uh, it's much more likely when you turn those on that there's going to be some, like, really great ideas in there. Okay? And so it's, it's really kind of a thing about probabilities. But there's more than just numbers involved. Um, so it's, it's the diversity uh, that is important and, and that is helpful. It's diversity of thought. Uh, it's uh, diversity of uh, experience. Um, and so diversity has a big upside because as you get this diverse range of ideas and opinions, you're more likely to stumble onto something uh, or think of something that, that is valuable and that can move a project forward. Of course, diversity also has uh, extra costs. It, it takes time uh, to uh, assimilate new and different ideas uh, and to kind of uh, change them and integrate them into the existing code path. So one of the things that I've learned just over the last little bit, I became the maintainer of a project called the Fuego uh, test system. And uh, over my 25 years uh, career in open source, I've always been a user and a contributor, but not really a maintainer. And uh, it was, it was eye-opening. I learned some things becoming a maintainer uh, that uh, gave me a different perspective on the open source process. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today is uh, what I refer to as the maintainer's paradox. Uh, and it really kind of boils down to this, that a maintainer uh, is really excited to see new contributions uh, to the project. And uh, we appreciate when new ideas come in, when new users join the project, there's a, always a bit of excitement. But there's also uh, a bit of fear and trepidation uh, that comes along with that. Um, uh, I, I have to admit, and I gotta say this carefully because there are Fuego contributors, I believe, in the audience this morning. But when I see a patch set on the mailing list, uh, sometimes I go, oh no, another patch set. Uh, <laughs> I just don't have time today to look at that. And I look at my schedule, it's like, when am I going to be able to fit in the time to look at that? Um, and because you want to do a good job. You want to you review the patches carefully. You want to uh, give uh, appropriate feedback. But, but uh, I found that being a maintainer can sometimes be overwhelming. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a more difficult job than I experienced. And so I have to kind of uh, go back and think about the times when I kind of got annoyed at maintainers uh, in the community. And, you know, they didn't do things that I was expecting, or they didn't respond as fast as I expected. I kind of set my own goal in the Fuego uh, project to try to respond to every patch in 24 hours. Well, that's a great ideal, but it is so unrealistic, I can't even tell you. In fact, this conference, uh, there's like four patch sets queued up that I haven't gotten to at all. Um, I apologize. Uh, but, you know, that, so that's the thing. We, we strive for the ideals. Um, one of the things that you may not realize, this is a metaphor I saw uh, uh, I think last year or the year before, uh, a patch contribution is a lot like a puppy. Um, that, you know, a puppy is a cute thing. Who wouldn't want to receive a puppy? Well, it uh, depends on your circumstances. You may or may not want to get a puppy. Uh, uh, to every, every patch that's contributed, 
especially if it's a feature patch, a new, a new branch of uh, functionality, that's something that has to be cared for indefinitely. Uh, and so uh, as a maintainer, you really, your incentive is to not take too many of these things uh, because it, it gets overwhelming. Um, and the other thing about being a maintainer is uh, despite our aspirations to have everything uh, be based on meritocracy, uh, the, the truth of the matter is there is a social element to uh, working uh, in the open source community. There's a social element to working in just about every uh, situation in life. Uh, but, you know, although we strive to have, um, we strive to only review the code and, and look at it purely on its merits, a lot of times there are personalities involved. Uh, because of the rushed nature uh, and the busy schedules of maintainers, sometimes there are answers that are curt, they're very, uh, sometimes they're snippy, people can get frustrated, there can be miscommunications, and, uh, and sometimes there's uh, negative things happen. So, um, you, you can argue whether or not the, well, let me, let me preface uh, this with a bit of a story. There's, um, at a conference, another conference recently, just earlier this year, uh, there was a talk given by one of the maintainers of the Linux kernel, and he talked about uh, some negative behaviors that, that he observed. Um, and uh, I, don't, I won't go into details. Uh, his, I don't agree with everything uh, that he said in the talk, uh, but uh, he saw some stuff that concerned him, and, and I applaud that he brought it forward and, and discussed it. Um, now, you can, you can argue whether or not the kernel uh, environment is, a, is a kind of a, a benign kind of a danger like the one on the left, or if it's really a hostile environment like the one on the right. That's a wood chipper. I've never seen so many uh, warning notices on a, on a device in my life. Uh, but... In any event, I think uh, whatever the current status is, we can always improve our, our communication uh, in the community. And so I want to give just a couple of quick tips uh, for what I think uh, will be helpful uh, to uh, improve uh, the positivity and, and uh, the level of communication in the community. Uh, so I tried to do the keynote thing where you only have like pictures, you know, but I, I decided I'd fall back on words. Um, so I think oh, tip number one is call out negative communication when you see it. Um, and this is, this is hard. If you've been the subject of some negative comment, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to respond. Uh, and so I encourage you, I don't want to deputize you all as a kind of thought police or anything, but, but if you see it, you know, a kind of a snarky comment or something that's negative, if you're a third party impartial, impartial observer, you know, say something. It can be in private. Uh, if, you act, if, if it's kind of a severe thing, it, it's sometimes useful to say it in public, to let, to, and we can elevate the tone of the conversation. Um, and I think that's a valuable thing to do. Uh, even, uh, even if people disagree with kind of the severity of, uh, of the negative comment, we can have a discussion and we can help uh, start establishing some uh, more positive norms in the community. Uh, another thing that you can do is, uh, as a contributor, route around the offender. Uh, one thing that we've been doing recently in the Linux kernel community is uh, establishing maintainer groups. So there's more than one person, we're hoping, that you can go to. So if a particular individual rubs you the wrong way, uh, you can go to someone else in the maintainer group. Uh, this is something that's evolving. Not every subsystem has a maintainer group right now, uh, but uh, we're hoping that we can improve that. This actually also relieves a lot of stress on the maintainers, which I think is a source of some of the snippiness. Um, and if, you, if you're in a situation where you don't see an avenue out, uh, send your patch to Andrew Morton. Andrew Morton has kind of been designated as the ombudsman for stray patches. He handles stuff where there's no maintainer, because there are sections in the kernel like that. Or if you have a, you know, a maintainer that you'd rather not work with, uh, communicate with Andrew and, and see what you can do. Um, another thing, not having to do with uh, negative communication, well, a little bit, uh, but just listen carefully uh, and actively clarify what the intended uh, message is and act on the feedback. A lot of frustration comes on the mailing list uh, because of miscommunication. Uh, and again, the communication is, can be somewhat curt. Uh, 
Uh, I saw one exchange uh, where you know, a developer said, oh, go read this and that, and uh, the guy read it, changed the patch, submitted it again, and then the response was, oh, you, you still got this wrong. And it was because it wasn't spe the communication wasn't specific about the particular problem that the original maintainer had noted. And so that type of thing can happen. Um, you know, we're all humans. But try to, try to actively clarify. If you, if you get kind of ambiguous directions from your maintainer, ask for clarification. Uh, that's not going to hurt. Um, and then another thing that will relieve the stress on your maintainer is uh, if you out, actually go out and actively assist. So don't just contribute patches, but go out and, and help with some of the things that the maintainer does by assisting people, answering questions. Uh, I'm the maintainer of the Fuego project, and uh, each, each time I get on the mailing list and answer questions, it takes some of my time. And I, it, I really appreciate it when other people can answer questions for me, uh, and especially if they get the answer right. Uh, that's really helpful. Um, but no, it, it saves me time, and uh, it really is. It's, it, it's like a weight off my shoulders when I see uh, other, other people helping. Um, the, the final thing, if you really want to make an impact, uh, become a maintainer yourself. You too can enjoy all of the, uh, this overwhelming feeling. Uh, uh, there are opportunities. Now, I need to be careful here. Uh, the truth of the matter is uh, not everyone has the time or the inclination, or quite frankly, the capacity to be a kernel maintainer. There are areas of the kernel uh, that are very difficult to change in a beneficial way. Uh, the Linux kernel it has now uh, you know, thousands of man years of development in it. There are sections of the Linux kernel, and, and it's used in uh, thousands of industries, and in literally billions of devices. And so um, the chance that if you're just coming out of college, and you have a new theory about scheduling, uh, that you're going to be able to get that in, and it's not going to break the workload on some device out there, the chance is just really, really low. I'm not saying it's impossible, but there are areas of the kernel that are quite mature, and you kind of need to build your way up uh, in order to work on them. Um, having said that, there is a role for everyone. Um, one of the things that I think is important is that no matter what your level of e expertise, no matter what your level of experience with the community, you can do something to contribute. Um, and so my last, my last uh, plea, I guess, is to find something to do. Uh, even, even if you're super busy, you don't have time to contribute code, uh, you, can, you can work on documentation, and that's actually a really good place to start. When I, before I became the Fuego maintainer, I spent uh, a bunch of time reading through the documentation and actually writing new documentation, which required that I research the code. Uh, but you can, you, there are other activities, testing uh, and triage of bugs. Uh, those are all really important. Sometimes we, we get caught up in the code contributions and we miss out on other opportunities that actually take less time and that we can do in uh, kind of a different level of urgency uh, to contribute. Uh, anyway, those are, those are just some ideas that uh, I thought I'd share with you. Uh, over, the, over the last 25 years, that's how long I've been doing this, uh, I, it has been my extreme pleasure to work with the, the Linux kernel, the Linux kernel community. Um, I think, in terms of the world history, I think that there is nothing quite like uh, this, this new economic system, open source, uh, that people can contribute to. Anyone in the world, literally, can contribute to uh, the Linux kernel, uh, to an open source project, and create value for the rest of humanity. So. If we all get to work together, we can create, uh, you know, a new paradise. <laughs> this is great stuff. Um, but really, just go out and, and find your place that you can contribute. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, and thank you for your time. <laughs>